there it is, fellas. The long-awaited snowmobile skidoo project. It's Henry at Moors and Blowers. Welcome to the second episode of the snowmobile. The first episode was my going to South Hold East Long Island to pick it up. Hour and a half drive with Sketchy the truck. And I've got it home. This was a trade with a push mower. <laughs> I got the push mower obviously free as I do my every other thing that I fix on this channel. I get it for free because everything that I sell that's free is complete profit. Anyway, I always wanted a snowmobile. Um, I've had some experience with snowmobiles, riding around for a day up in the Montana mountains uh, once and uh, just love snowmobiles. I don't know if I'll get any uh, snow in Long Island anymore, but nevertheless, <laughs> I wanted it. Uh, I don't know what I'm gonna do to start off trying to get this thing working. I don't have a key, see? So I'm gonna have to do what I did with the scooter by trying to find the ignition tumbler, the ignition switch tumbler, and trying to find the module connected to it and then jump the red and black wire to give it continuity. Therefore, it's not killed. So that we'll get some spark to test. Then we're gonna remove the spark plugs and I'm gonna stick a boroscope in there and check out the conditions of the uh, cylinder bore as well as the top of the pistons to see if it's all scratched up and messed up and filled with water or something like that. But preliminary uh, findings in it when I first got it, looks like that it's pretty good. All the fluids, the radiator fluid is green. It's got plenty of oil in it. I don't know how much gas is in it, but we're gonna take one step at a time and see if we can fire this baby up. And it does pull freely, but I have to first hot wire the ignition. It never fails. The minute I start filming, the landscapers decide, hey, Henry's filming. Let's go and use our leaf blower and just make noise. I really should find a way to just like secure this hood to something. But This'll do. That's it. That's all of that. <laughs> Looks like a bunch of spaghetti to me. Uh, here are the two spark plugs. It's a two-cylinder. Um, Rotax, I believe. Anyway, this engine was made in Austria. Holy cow. Ridiculous! So I'm gonna have to try to find a way to get to this area here where the ignition tumbler is. As you can see, green fluid in the uh, radiator, uh, for the radiator. We did this before. The carburetor does, the carburetor does not have an air box, but yet it looks clean. Relatively clean. Now, if I ever do get this started, I'm gonna have to blow all this stuff out or something because that stuff's gonna get sucked right into the carburetor. Maybe I should make put some kind of sponge over there and make a makeshift uh, air air cleaner or something, air filter. The fuel lines look okay. They're not like brittle. Maybe this one is. I mean, they they they're flexible and kind of rubbery which is good news. I don't see any detached ones. Therefore, I mean, look at all the vacuum lines, thousands of them. And look, ample oil. I have no idea about the gas tank. It uh, There's the cap and it goes all the way down. And uh, one of these things is the ignition, I believe, one of these two. This is the tether where I guess if you pull it, it stops it or something like that. I'm not 100% sure. There it is right there. So this is the tether, right? You're supposed to clip this onto your body so that if you get, you're get riding and you get thrown off or something, this thing won't keep going, it'll stop it. So when you pull it, this thing comes off. There's like a kill switch here. This switch pushed down uh, means that it'll run. The minute you pull it off, it won't run anymore, it's a kill. So once you let go, it kills the engine. So you wanna make sure for testing, we keep this in which I think if you just push this on, it should be okay. A 
I remove the ignition switch and that black part comes off. There's only two wires that go together on one side, two wires go together on the other side. When you take it off, this part says magneto, this part says ground. So it's only one, two connections, ground and magneto. Since this doesn't have a battery, this middle one, I believe, is the one that connects these two together. So when you have the key in here and you turn it, it disconnects. Well, it's one of those. It's either it connects these two or disconnects these two. So if you have it just like that, it's disconnected, meaning that the ground doesn't touch the magneto. So it'll... Uh, it'll be okay to run. So I think that because this and this need to touch for it to not run, right, to shut it off, I think if I just connect this circuit to that circuit with like a wire, that should mimic one closed circuit. Uh, nope, and that would be, that would be ground. Uh, I gotta figure this out. So I've been thinking, I think that just removing the tumbler makes it uh, a disconnected circuit, right? Because Magneto now doesn't go anywhere. Ground doesn't go anywhere. So Magneto is not being grounded at this time. So therefore, we should get spark. That's what I'm thinking. I'm going to remove the spark plugs now, and uh, let's find out if we get any spark. It says NGK. Looks good. Looks really good. Let's connect back to this. Let's put it here. Let's see if we get any spark when I pull on it. This might be aluminum though, so. <laughs> I'm gonna do that, right? This is aluminum. Maybe. Maybe not. to do. Okay, I shut off the lights so I can see it better. I'm going to pull on it. That's what she said. Let's see if we have any spark. Did you guys see any spark? Awesome. I went back to the video to watch. Should I be doing this? I'm going to get confused. Yeah, you know what? I'm going to get confused. I know it's easy, but I might get confused, okay? That's all. I'll just put this like this for now. I'll take this off. Do the same thing see if we get spark on this one but i'm stoked that we got spark on that one that's awesome this plug looks just as good as the other one let's hide it in here like that one 
Let's see if we get spark out of that one. I'm gonna go pull it. That's what you said. See, just disconnecting the ignition, it worked. I feel good compression even though the spark plug is out. Did you guys see any spark? I'm using my new test long, not test short, test long, boroscope. I'm gonna stick it down here and check out the cylinder. You guys can see that, right? Because it's in the dark. Ooh, look at that. God, it looks so clean. You see that? Oh, that's awesome. Uh, what's that ridge there, though? You know, right here? What is that? I've never seen that before. Hey, check this out. Right there. What is that? Is that an opening to take it to the other part? That's That looks great, doesn't it? You know what? I'm going to go pull it and see if it moves up and down. Oh, look at that. Look at that. Awesome. That cylinder looks fantastic, doesn't it? That looks great. That looks perfect, doesn't it? All right, let me uh, let me do the other cylinder and check it out. Okay, I'm gonna get you closer now for this one. Check it out. Let's see. Okay, so that cylinder is up high right now. I'm gonna pull it so it goes down a little bit. So that's on the, all the way down. That cylinder looks really good too. What do you guys think, huh? Looks good. No need for mystery oil or dumping oil down there. So we got spark. Cylinder looks great. I think we just blow some fluid into the carburetor to see if it turns over. What do you guys think? This test long thing is fantastic, huh? Really works well. All right, what do you guys think? We took all the necessary precautions first, didn't we? So uh, I'm just going to spray some jism into the carburetor mouth. I have to throttle up to get the lever up. Okay, that's uh, the right cylinder. Now I'm spraying it into the left. Not that much it was spring air uh, I'm a little worried about all the stuff that could get sucked in if it works and I cover it up with some kind of mesh could just suck it out this is the problem of being inside the house you know inside the garage I'm just gonna weigh it weigh the leaves down with water and put a piece of cardboard there Keep it from flying out. Uh, it's far enough that I don't think it'll do anything. <laughs> Watch it goes flying over there. All right, look, uh, I'm just gonna pull, pull it. We have spark. I feel like we have compression. I just gave it some jism, some fuel. Let's see if it turns over, okay? That's all we want it to do. Just 
tough. Oh, so it didn't turn over. Spray some more stuff. Maybe I should spray it somewhere else. Put the spark plug out and I don't see any wetness. Just gonna spray some down the uh, spark plug hole where it has to combust. Maybe there's something blocking or it's not reaching the area, whatever. It takes more pulls than that. Be nice if it was electric start, obviously, but it's not. I'm gonna do this one too. Then we'll give it another try. All right, now, now it ought to, right? Because the spark is right near the, the uh, fuel. at all compression test so this is the uh, mower that I fixed recently some lady wants to buy it uh, I'm gonna go meet her at the church uh, I listed it for 100 bucks <laughs> uh, hopefully I get a hundred bucks maybe I listed it for 125 I'm not sure locked and loaded So nice lady driving an excursion diesel. You don't see that every day. Anyway, really nice lady. Talked to her for a little while. Uh, I listed it for a hundred bucks and she says, you know, I have to ask, are you flexible on the price? And I said, normally I wouldn't mind at all. However, I have 17 people who emailed me about this mower today and a hundred bucks these days, that's a steal. She goes, well, you know, I had to ask. And I says, hey, I always ask too. 
if I've ever bought anything. <laughs> so I don't buy anything, so I don't really have to ask. But uh, I used to. Anyway, uh, she knew that other people were coming. So uh, good old Benjamin Franklin, my favorite guy on the bill. Uh, really cool. Uh, so got rid of, that was lawnmower number 14 for the year. <laughs> awesome. Listen, so I can't figure out that uh, snowmobile. I guess I'm going to go home now and try to do a compression test on it. It's the only thing. I mean, we, we sprayed fluid into the car, uh, spark plug hole. So it's right there with the spark. If it had compression, it should have at least turned over, right? I blew a bunch into the uh, uh, mouth of the carburetor, both both mouths. Nothing, not even an inkling of any uh, compression. Uh, not compression, but uh, combustion. And so that bothers me because I... I mean, after three pulls, I'm winded already. You know, it's it, it feels great, like it's great compression. But you never know. Uh, valves, something not opening, something stuck, whatever, not having enough compression. But, I mean, it, it feels like a it's a strong pull. You know what I mean? So, I don't know. Uh, I thought when we saw a spark on both spark plugs, I was like, <laughs> this is going to fire. You know what I mean? So, I'm a little discouraged for the fact that it doesn't. Anyway, I could talk all day. Okay, I got the compression tester hooked up. Let's see what it ends up being. If it's uh, over 100, it's pretty good. Even it'll run at 90. At least that's with lung wars. All right, here we go. We gotta pull it like five times just to get a good reading. Pulled it like five times. Really hard too. Oh dear. That's like uh, 90? It's between the 75 and 100. So 85, 90? That's not really good, is it? So uh, I actually put the spark plug back on cylinder number one and put the compression tester on cylinder number two. The reason why is because when we look at the boroscope, right, you notice that there was like uh, a passage almost like both cylinders were connected. So I didn't want to leave this out, otherwise you would have no compression, right? So I put this back in there. Uh, that might have something to do with it too. You guys notice that passage? It looked like cylinder number one and two were connected. Like it, it allows spark to go into a tunnel that leads to the other cylinder. I don't know, it's weird. Uh, but anyway, let's reset it. It was, it was right between 75 and 100. So right in the middle, I don't know how that is. Uh, Difference between 75 and 100 is uh, 12 and a half, right? So 12 and a half plus 75 is uh, 87 and a half. So 87, 90. All right, whatever. That was pretty good math, actually. <clears throat> God, I'm gonna get a blister on my finger for sure. Oh no, oh, that's very, you know what, it's exactly the same between 75 and 100, it's exactly the same. So we got a reading of 87 and a half on both cylinders, that's not very good. You know what, got nothing to lose. Uh, I'm gonna put some oil down the both spark plug holes. That'll give you a little bit of better compression. Uh, so I'm going to pour some little bit of two cycle oil in there. This is a two cycle machine, so it won't hurt it. It'll just smoke a lot. <laughs> but uh, I believe these things smoke a lot anyway. So here we go. A little bit of two stroke oil in here just to coat the top part of the piston and rings. And then you should create a little bit better compression. And maybe then it might start. I don't know. So I'm getting a little discouraged by this because I thought it would fire up. It only makes sense for it to fire up. I don't see any uh, overhead valve covers that I could take off to look at valve lash or anything like that. And that might be a little beyond me. Like I said, I'm a newbie when it comes to snowmobiles. 
this is my first one and I don't really know anybody else that has one. <laughs> so this is all new to me. Uh, did I say that this is a Bombardier? Yeah, the engine is a Bombardier made in Austria. So there you go. We got a little bit of two stroke oil in both cylinders. Uh, I'm gonna put the spark plug back in and the spark plug wire so that it creates the spark. Man, that's tough to turn now. May have some grease in between the threads or something like that, or dirt, making it hard to uh, turn. Either that or stripping, I'm stripping the threads. <laughs> All right. Uh, so I'll blow some more jism into the um, mouth of the carburetor, see if we get better compression. Of course, I could also be flooding it if it doesn't need it, right? If I doubt it. All right, that's, that's a bunch. All right, I'm going to pull it and see if it starts. Sons of bitches. Ow. something like almost break loose to make it easier. on my finger this finger so yeah man I'm stumped I'm gonna leave it to you guys what do you guys think I should do what's the problem leave it in the comments some of you guys that are subscribers I know you're over in Canada eh? and if you're in Canada you probably have a sled uh, all of you guys in Minnesota and uh, Montana and stuff I bet you got one too or the Dakotas I know all you guys have sleds up there. So let me know what you think. I mean, didn't I do everything right? Boroscoped it to make sure that we weren't going to create any damage by testing it. Uh, cylinders look great. Pistons look great. Hardly any carbon buildup either. Disconnected the ignition so that we don't have any uh, ground to the magneto. Therefore, we're getting spark. We saw spark on both plugs, which is great. NGK plugs on the Bombardier, right? Two-cylinder. Uh, did a compression test on both. They're identical at uh, 87 and a half. Identical. Identical. Poured some two cycle oil in there to help increase the compression. On that first pull after the uh, oil, it felt a little weird. Like I'm pulling it with resistance and then it let go a little. Like, like a cylinder was rusted there and then I pulled it free free uh, which this was but you know four more pulls and nothing uh, blue stuff in there blue stuff in the holes uh, I don't think the compression's good enough but I don't know if this is an overhead valve I don't see any valve covers to do a valve lash you know or to test the valves I have no idea um, let me know in the comments fellas I could use your help until then, I'm stuck. I don't know really where to go now. I don't know what the next step would be, you know. Uh, I sure wish this was an electric start because I'm telling you, I'm beat. I must have pulled this thing like 30 times today. And uh, like I said, I got a blister. Anyway, uh, <laughs> this was uh, really the first episode of uh, troubleshooting the uh, Skidoo. And uh, I mean, I'm excited about it, but now I'm a little discouraged, to be honest with you. But we did sell uh, mower number 15. 14 was something else. So 15 for the year 2023, not bad. And uh, I'm making a dent into that uh, mother load 33 pile in the backyard. I only have like two left. <laughs> Amazing, huh? Anyway, thanks a lot for joining me, fellas. We'll see you guys all next time. I'm gonna... Wait a minute, wait a minute, don't leave yet. Just uh, me standing around on my own, no camera. I pulled it and it went blah, 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 blah. Then I pulled it again and it ran for like two seconds.
Uh, it might have burned up all the stuff. I'm going to pull it again and show you. Ah, you see? You heard it? It ran. The lights in the dash lit up. All right, so it does run. It turned over, even for that split second. I don't know if you guys saw the lights on or anything like that. Uh, anyway, some other nut might want to buy that uh, <laughs> that green one there. I might be able to sell uh, more number 16 today. I said he's meeting me. I have this listed for 150 Oh, because of the bag. And this is a better mower. It's bigger. It looks better, too. And I'll take this little 100 bucks. I just want to get rid of it. Sales a sale. Money's money. If I'm going to go through the trouble of loading it, I want to get the money for it. I'm not going to reload it again, drive back just to get another 10, 20 bucks. Get rid of it now. about that a tire kicker on a push mower guy shows up in a white honda accord guy had no intention of buying a mower from me today what a waste of goddamn time man but look you're gonna run into tire kickers like that you know testing the market seeing what's new what's used what you know, he's going to go look around for some other mowers. I mean, wow. I can't be upset because I um, got the snowmobile fired up. <laughs> Hope you guys enjoyed the episode. We'll see you guys next time on Mowers and Blowers. See you guys next time on Mowers and Blowers.